time, we had a little talk about how much pressure we are putting on ourselves right now. I know you are putting a lot of pressure on yourself to do all the things. One of the issues we're having in isolation is, of course, the need to pivot our business, the need to educate our kids, the need to keep things going, and it's exhausting. So I think we've reached a point during isolation now where we've sort of gone past the first wave of reaction to isolation, and certainly as business owners, we've gone past that initial phase of panic about what our businesses are gonna look like. Small businesses, we live or die, depending on how, how our revenue streams function. It's been a frightening time. So I've mentioned many, many times how impressed I've been with how creative small business owners, especially those in the hospitality industry, right, have been during this period of time. What I'm seeing is other sectors have gone past that initial phase of panic around how do I make my business online? My business can't be an online business. I'm not gonna survive this. To then creatively finding ways that they can offer their business online. You may have heard me tell the story before that I've heard of a plumber offering online consultations via Zoom to help people uh, or to coach people through unplugging, the, unplugging their sinks or unblocking a drain or unplugging, un, unblocking the toilet. I think I said unplugging before, unblocking um, a drain or a sink or a toilet or something. What a clever idea just to get through, right? And this is what we're having to do is really smartly, creatively generate some revenue streams for our businesses to help us get through this phase. That first push, that first turnaround where one minute restaurants are still open and saying, yeah, you know, we'll probably do some takeaway. I think that's what we'll do. And to, with 12 hours notice really is what happened suddenly all the restaurants are closed and having to determine how they were gonna keep functioning at all. Now, some businesses have been really smart and really fast in how they've handled this turnaround. We hear the word pivot used a lot, and this is where you, re you, know, you shift your direction from you're heading in this direction, now you've shifted and you're going in that direction with your business. These guys aren't just pivoting, they're bloody pirouetting you know they're so creative and they're coming up with new ideas all the time and I'm seeing this and I'm seeing it because I'm watching and I'm watching because I'm fascinated by this I'm fascinated by this period of our human history I'm fascinated by this period of small business ownership and seeing the creativity I'm fascinated by the future and where we're heading the future of work, the future of doing business, the future of running services for our communities and serving our communities in new ways, in more accessible ways too. Super excited by all of that. Now, of course, it shouldn't need saying, but I will say, I hate the fact that this is coming out of a need to lock us down because of illness, people are dying, people are frightened, people have lost their jobs. I completely understand. But I'm wanting to celebrate the positives that I'm seeing and what I am seeing that is super positive is this creative surge in some areas of our communities. Now that comes at a cost though. And I think now that we've pushed through that initial panic of, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna pay people? We've pushed through that initial panic phase and now we've hit a different zone we still don't know how long this is gonna go on for. We're finding, I wouldn't say we've found, but we're finding a new way of being, a new normal. And because we're in isolation, we're at risk of not communicating with our peers as much as we might otherwise, because we're all at home doing our thing, right? What I want you to think about in that sense, of all doing our own thing independently, is are you pushing yourself too hard right now? I'm not talking about forever. I'm not talking about, hey, let's just throw our hands up in the air and say, whatevs, I'm just gonna do my thing and don't care anymore. What I'm saying is right now, in this wave <laughs> that we're in, where we're finding our feet again, now's the time to take a break. Now's the time to just give yourself five minutes if you're feeling you need it. Now, not everyone's feeling they need it. And if you're feeling like you're going for gold and the, 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 you've got something in, in your sights and it's just, just there, 
keep going, do that, you know, achieve and, and put your energies into your business, into your endeavors, into the things that you're passionate about, do all of that. But if you're tired, and so many of you are, because this is what I'm hearing a lot of, so many of you are so, so tired. And if you're tired and you need to take a break from the pushing and the balancing and the juggling and the trying to be all things, take a break. For God's sake, take a break. Because if you don't, when we don't have an end in sight, if you don't take the opportunity to rest every now and then, you'll burn out, you'll break, you won't last the distance. So think of this like a marathon or think of it like interval training, if you like, where we push, 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 and then we rest. And then we push, 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 and then we rest some more. So think about what you need, what you need right now. Don't, I need to do this for my staff and I need to do this for my business and I need to do this for my customers and I need to do this for my children and their education and I need to do this because, because the education department said so. You don't need to do any of those things today if you need a break. So a lot of people are talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs at the moment. It seems to have re-emerged to help us understand what we're going through. We can't move upwards and achieve higher things and higher purpose, that sense of higher, higher value in our lives if we're not meeting our basic needs first. Our need for our survival needs have to come first. You know, are we feeling safe needs to come first before we can move on with the other things. So we're gonna have, I think, a bit of a backward forward movement at the moment where you're gonna be push, 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 and then you're gonna need to just regroup and come back and breathe and calm yourself down, rest. Now for me, the way that manifests, the last few days, so I'm, I'm thinking back now to how this all unfolded for me personally. So for me, the first few weeks of lockdown coincided with dramatic shifts in the, in the mental health sector with government rules and regulations around how we, how we build for our businesses while we provide telehealth separate to face-to-face. -face. Now, um, that required a lot of attention from me, a lot of additional research time, and really, really connecting with my private practice community and really doing everything I could to support them through changing times. Within the space of two weeks, things shifted so dramatically, and now they've come to a business as usual billing model, at least, for telehealth services, which means that everyone's now taken a breath and gone, well, that sucked. Now we can just focus on providing a good service and billing our usual fee. So the last few days, I've taken a little bit of a backward step, realizing that I had been so tired all the time and I had been feeling guilty that I wasn't giving my children as much focused attention as I would normally give them in a homeschooling setup, keeping in mind one of my kids has been homeschooled for the last six months or so, um, and the other one dabbled in it. So I have some experience of homeschooling. I know you don't need to replicate school at home. You don't need to be in front of your child for six hours a day teaching. I know all of that stuff. And still I was feeling guilty because I was working so hard and not giving the time I felt was appropriate for my kids and their home education needs right now. So I spent the last couple of days, and if you're watching my Instagram stories, you will have seen the evidence of this. I spent the last couple of days just being with them, baking. That's what we did. We baked bread, we made bread sticks, we made biscuits. We just spent some time together doing fun, pseudo-educational activities. So here's what I want you to take away today. I want you to listen. Do you need to take a social media detox? Do you need to do something different in your working day so that you can function a little bit more kindly to yourself? Do you need to take a break? Do you need to focus on one thing today and a different thing tomorrow? So do you need to say, okay, today's a business day, tomorrow's a home education day? It's okay to do that. It's okay to take the pedal off 
your working pressure, it's equally okay to take the pedal off your home educating pressure as well. Your kids aren't gonna break, they're not gonna die, they're learning other invaluable things. And do you know what? When school does go back, every child will have had a very different experience of being in isolation and learning from home. There will be no consistency there that your child is gonna be behind on. Every single child will have had a unique experience with their own family's interpretation of what educating from home means. So take the guilt away from yourself. Take the pressure off. Focus more on connecting with your kids while you've got this gift of time with them. And if you don't have kids and you haven't got that added pressure, be kind to yourself and take the opportunity to connect with what you're passionate about. Connect with the things that fill you up and make sure you're allowing time for that as well. It is so important, so important. Don't want you burning out. Don't want you blowing a gasket. I want you to be able to see the long haul and I want you to have the energy to be able to draw on creativity when it strikes. And you can do some pivoting and pirouetting when the time is right for you. So if you need a break, for God's sake, take it. There's no prizes for doing it harder than everybody else. We just want you to get through this in one fabulous piece that is you, because you are doing an amazing job. You're working super, super hard. And I also happen to know that you're a bit of an overachiever. You're very conscientious and you feel guilty when you're not working super hard. So cut that shit out, take a break if you need it, and I'll talk to you soon. As always, much love from me. Mwah.